the Maine Coon Cat. The significance of the name Maine Coon comes from its origins. This cat comes from the United States, from the state of Maine, therefore explaining the Maine part. While it's believed that the coon comes from a myth where it's believed that the breed comes from the crossing of a cat with a raccoon. So this is where the part of the name coon comes from. However, this is simply a myth because biologically it is just not possible for a raccoon to mate with a cat. It simply forms part of the story of the cat's origins and it also explains the meaning of the name. Spaces. In terms of space, any place is pleasant as long as their owner is close. The space doesn't really matter if it's narrow or wide, if it's outside or inside, just as long as their owner is around. They get along really well with their owners and a small space doesn't matter as long as you give them ways to play, something they need. If they have someone they can exercise, then that's enough. Try to take them out to exercise at least every eight days, 15 days. This means they should go out for a walk, see other spaces, run, where they can just be cats. Meow. The main coon doesn't meow. Instead, they give out certain tones or gesticulations, like the voice of a child. But they can't meow. They don't meow. It's a quiet breed. Diet. Maine Coons are freely given concentrates between 180 and 220 grams a day, and every eight days they are given a protein diet and water is freely given. Popularity. As for kids, this is a very advisable cat breed to have because they're very calm and very strong, which is good because as adults they can play with children without themselves getting hurt or being too delicate. In terms of demand, these cats are just entering the market and there aren't many homes with this breed. Due to this idea that since they are big, they are an animal to be wary of. In the end, the Maine Coon is like any other cat, only bigger, but still a sleepy head and playful. Health. In terms of health, Maine Coons will only start developing problems after the age of 15 or 20, when they start suffering from cardiomegaly and hip dysplasia because of their size. Other than that, they're completely healthy and calm. In terms of disease as well, the whole time I've had my cats, I've never experienced any. Longevity. Reports from other countries have literature referencing 18-year-old Maine Coons that are still healthy, yet very calm and tranquil due to their old age, which is okay. Adaptability to weather. The ideal climate for a Maine Coon, obviously because of its origins, are those countries that have seasons since they are countries with snow. These cats, however, have behaved very well. The only thing is that in these countries, and especially here in Medellin, their hair tends to be less dense due to the climate. So they tend to thermoregulate. They still remain with their thick coat, however along with its characteristics, shine, silkiness, and a good adaptability to the environment. Temperament. They are very social, easygoing, and playful. You could even say they're like a dog in the house because of how intelligent they are. Purr. Cats purr as a show of affection and also to show how relaxed they are. The purr of the Maine Coon breed is very soft, weak for the same reason that they don't normally meow. 
When they're with their owner, they're relaxed and tend to purr. Gestation The gestation period for these cats is the same as other cats. It's around 62 to 65 days the gestation period for females. It's important that when you're breeding, to verify through the use of an ultrasound on the female around the 25th or 26th day how the fetuses are forming in the mother's womb. As for the number of kittens, the number varies from one, which is not so common, to seven or eight, which is also not that common. Let's say the average is of around four to six kittens. This is linked to genetic factors that can determine the number of kittens a female can have which on average is between four and five kittens, although in exceptional cases you could have seven, eight, nine kittens in one litter. So the Maine Coon has an average of three to six kittens. When they're born, they don't move from their mother's side for around 15 days, depending on the mom. On day eight, they're already opening their eyes, and on the 15th day, they're becoming a little more independent, and after 15 days, they're exploring. In my particular case, I've always left them with their mom for 45 or 60 days so that she can teach them how to survive in their environment, and also so they can acquire more immunity and be healthier. What's advisable is to start the weaning process when the kittens are two months of age. When they're a month and a half, you can start removing the kitten and start giving it solids, so the kitten can start to familiarize itself with the food. However, the ideal age is two months, since by then the kitten has already gotten all the nourishment it can from its mom and therefore has a stronger immune system. Vaccinations It's not just the Maine Coon, but with any cat, the ideal thing to do in its first 45 to 60 days is to deworm the kitten. After this, they should wait 15 to 20 days before their first vaccination. The ideal first vaccination is the triple feline. Then you wait a month and apply a rabies shot. Then you wait another month and then apply the feline leukemia vaccine. Before you administer the leukemia vaccine, however, you must test and make sure the kittens don't already have the disease. If, for any reason, a kitten tests positive for leukemia, the best thing is not to vaccinate because it is already sick. Spay and neuter. The spay and neuter of cats, both for male and females, is advisable. Actually, all specimens that are bred and given as pets will always be handed over already spayed and neutered. Spaying and neutering avoids the problem of territory marking, both by males and females. When a cat, regardless of gender, isn't spayed or neutered, they tend to mark their territory with urine, and not regular urine, but a urine with pheromones which usually has a very potent odor, one that could potentially affect the owners. This does not mean that the marking of territory through urine necessarily happens with every unfixed individual, but it is an important factor to point out when discussing neutering and spaying. Also, when males and females, especially females, are in heat, they tend to become more affectionate and they become more intense with their owner. Also, they're going to start to constantly make meowing noises, which could even try the pet owner's patience. That is why spaying and neutering your pet at an early stage is important. Doing it after three months is advisable, so you may avoid all these issues. Additionally, a female that has not been spayed may go on to suffer a disease called pyometra, 
a disease that manifests in the cat's uterus, causing it to fill up with pus due to infections that enter the cat when she is in heat. Therefore, spaying is important, not just to prevent the marking of territory, but it's also important for health reasons. A castrated or spayed cat lives longer than a cat that hasn't been fixed. Thank <laughs> you.